Hello, welcome to another episode of Expat Corner. Well, it's been a while since we last talked about sport activities for the expats. And now as summer is nearing, we bring the topic back again. And in the first part of the show, let's take a look at an activity from Hanoi Red River Runners, one of a few popular sport groups in the city. The Red River Runners is one of several sport groups in Hanoi, yet it is volunteer organized and there are no members. The group, throughout the past nine years, has been bringing together people in Hanoi, both Vietnamese and expats alike, who loves running. Apart from weekly events, the group also has successfully organized community races, attracting hundreds of people. The group, with its numerous activities, is playing an important role in diversifying the local sports scene, especially for expats living in Hanoi. The triathlon the group held last year was among those activities. This was the second time that a triathlon event has been held by the group. But as usual, the organizers had to work really hard to ensure the safety of those attending and success of the event. We had to go out and we've had to make sure the cycle course is safe, which is always hard in Hanoi to find a nice place to have a, a safe uh, section. And we were really pleased that Saputra offered us to run inside the estate because it's much safer to run here. In this triathlon event, attendees would compete with each other in a 300-meter streaming course, a 5-kilometer biking course, and a 5-kilometer run. Though this is not a full triathlon in which competitors have to race much further distances, the competitiveness is not any less among these expats. Everyone was eager for the starting signal for an event that would make them sweat. Soon, everyone is excited by the ongoing activities. People, maybe they don't get a chance to do a full triathlon, which is uh, double the distance. So this is a good uh, introduction to it. So it's uh, a lot of fun and very social. And some people um, uh, try very hard. After finishing the first 300 meters stream content, Competitor rush to the next event, which is biking. Any seconds competitor lost during the streaming could be earned by the quicker dash to the area where they park the bicycles. It's real hard to find an 18-kilometer bike course in the city, so the organizers decided to set up a 5-kilometer course in the area. The course, however, is still open to traffic, which means competitors have to share it with others, including motorbikes, cars, and food traffic. It's okay. Uh, I did not get, get lost, so <laughs> I think it was okay. Uh, yeah. It's a nice race. The road on the cycle is a bit congested, but it's early morning, it's not too bad, and it's no big deal really. Yeah, it's uh, nice to, to cycle around uh, Westlake and go past all the familiar sights around Westlake, so it's fine. The last leg of the race was a five kilometer run. Despite the stiff competitiveness in the first two events, many competitors survived until the last round and reached the finishing line. The race not only provided fun to the participants, but also their relatives and loved ones who watched from the sidelines. I think for the expats, I mean, for those who are uh, interested in sport, yes, it's very nice, uh, it's good. You have uh, many people of uh, different uh, physical ability uh, experience, and they make the best of it, and it's a very warm and friendly atmosphere, 
at uh, any other races. The smiles on people's faces and the, the general press that we get is pretty positive. People are, are pretty happy and enjoy being here, so it's great. I am happy to organise if people are happy to come. Cost effective and bringing lots of fun. The Hanoi Red River Runners Group is growing more support from expats who wants to get involved in sport activities in Hanoi. The trend of playing tennis is on the rise in Vietnam. For the Vietnamese, it's quite easy to find a good coach who can help them improve their skills and take up their sport. But for the foreigners, it's much more difficult since language being considered the biggest barrier. So is it possible to find a foreign tennis coach for the expat while they're in Hanoi? Well, the answer is yes. Let's meet Tony Villander, a professional tennis coach. My name is Tony Villander, I'm from Sweden, and I've been working with tennis in different countries in the world. In Vietnam, I came here in 1997, and I've been coming and going, so I've been here for 11 years altogether. From the beginning, I came here as a tourist, and then they were asking, people were asking me, why don't you come back here and look for work? And so I did. So I've been working in different places, like a sports manager in big hotel and sports clubs and so on. And I come here and I liked it. It was a different style of life. So I stayed and I got a job and things been rolling on. Today, Tony arrives at a tennis court in Anzen Street as a tennis coach with decades of experience. Having others learn to play tennis is his biggest passion. This Swedish man has traveled around the world to the US, Kuwait, China, and Vietnam. And he has worked as a tennis coach in Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi for years. Well, it depends the weather and so on, but between 10 and 15 hours a week. Some people play two hours a week, some people play one hour a week. It's uh, expats people, children, adults, new beginners, advanced player. Some people they just want to learn to hit the ball a few times over net so they can have a game with a friend. Some people they want more advanced training and really improve in an advanced level. So it's very different expectations. Tony's student today is Gabriel, an expert from Luxembourg. Though he's been keeping himself busy with streaming and football, Gabriel still wants to play tennis. He has tried to find a tennis coach in Hanoi and Tony turns out to be the guy he wants. There is this web page for expat community in Hanoi called New Hanoian, and uh, and I looked up. I I, I googled um, tennis coach, and I found Tony. So I thought, let's give it a shot. There was a short resume about his experience, and uh, which is good. But I believe you know a person who has been actually in the country for such a long time as well, you know, makes a difference. Coming to Vietnam to work not long ago. Gabriel doesn't know much about Vietnam and finding a foreign tennis coach for him is quite a difficult task. But with Tony's support, Gabriel does not have to deal with problems such as language and that has allowed him to make progress faster. I think it's, it's possible to find a lot of very good coaches here, but the, the, the problem is of course the language. You know? uh, my, my Vietnamese is unfortunately very weak, so you know it could, could have been a barrier. So it's only recently I found Tony. And uh, I hadn't been playing tennis for a while now, but I, I felt I needed to refresh it a bit. So I found Tony and I've been having some class with him and it's good fun. Michael is one of Tony's friends. This man, despite his physical limits, still wants to learn so he can play tennis with his child. He comes to Tony for help and finds what he needs in quite a short period of time. His coaching is very good because he can adapt to small children, to older people like myself, who want to, all I want to do is play tennis again um, for the sake of playing my children. And Tony is quite happy to compromise between the two. And I myself have some time to practice a bit with Tony as well. All right, so today I have a chance to join a training, a, a coaching with uh, Tony, one of the handful of experienced tennis coaches in Hanoi and his, he would tell me some tricks to improve my skill. Hello Tony. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, and today what are you going to tell me? Well, some few technical tricks about forehand, backhand and whatever shot. And... Okay, so now let's get on the court. Okay. Number one, let the ball bounce and then you hit. There we go, beautiful. That's for every shot in tennis, keep the ball 
in front of you. Left hand. Okay, doing well. Shall we try a few serves? You want to toss the ball almost half a meter in front of you. So your right shoulder finish down at the target. Yes. Yeah, remember left foot on backhand. This is Tony, and if any expert in Hanoi wants to improve the skill in tennis, just look for him. Very experienced tennis coach. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. For some expats in town, working out in the gym or doing some popular sports is not interesting enough. Those people often look for some combat sport like martial art, jiu-jitsu or kickboxing. And if they want to find a venue that offers those sports activities, Viet Fighters is one of the names that they should think of. After making a phone call, I get the address of Viet Fighter, a martial arts club in Hanoi. Visiting the venue, which is located in Oka Street in the western part of the city, I meet with Long, the manager and head trainer of the club. When I first came back to Vietnam, there was not many places where you could get real world-class training uh, and real world-class um, Muay Thai training or boxing training. Uh, or MMA training or even fitness training. So uh, that was my dream to come back to Vietnam and uh, open a world-class training facility with world-class facility, world-class training and world-class coaches. Becoming a trainer in martial arts was not Nguyen Van Long's dream at first. In fact, he was educated in New Zealand and Australia to become a doctor. But after working for a few years as a doctor in Australia, Long got bored with a good job and decided to follow his passion, doing and coaching martial arts. Long has attended many international battles in Muay Thai and mixed martial arts before coming back to Vietnam and opening his own training facility. Okay, so this is uh, Long, the manager of the club, and he will give me some coaching about the skills in Muay Thai. So, um, how do we start? What we're gonna do is first, we're gonna give you, uh, we're gonna make sure you, you know what, your, what a normal stance for you is, okay? You're gonna be on the ball of your feet. So the left is straight, uh, the, the right is pointing out at 45 degree angle there, okay? That's good. And you're gonna get off your heel, get on the ball of your feet, you're gonna find your balance there, okay? And the most basic uh, technique in Muay Thai is a straight punch. Make a fist here, right. elbows in, relax, hands there. Again, hands up, okay, left, right, left, right, beautiful. Now, what we need you to do is throw a basic straight left, followed by straight right. One, two, and again, one, two. Pivot oh, your hip yeah. forward, yes, get more power there. Power's coming, and bring your hand back very high. And again, one, two, very good. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna see how you can kick. Do a little bit of kicking, okay? So you're gonna stand in your normal stance, left leg forward, right leg back, hands up here. I keep my legs straight here and I pivot into the back and I bring it back. You're gonna pivot into the back. Like this? Yes, good, but swing more of your hip in. Get your hip in, you get more power. Yes, stay relaxed in, in, uh, in a good distance, away from the back. You're gonna be here, relax, and then you're gonna kick, and then you're gonna relax. Good. Beautiful, let's move on to the pad. Yo, good, good kick, very good. Okay, that's it, more power. Good, more hip, rotate your hip over. Good, more power, hit the middle. Yes, now we're gonna do a basic combination. Left, right, yes, and one more time. One, two, good. Excellent, good work, this good is really work. Hard, eh? It's really hard. That's I don't know if I can survive for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, you will do it's fine. Really good. Yeah. You did fine. You did fine. Attila from Hungary and Arnold from France are among the trainees at the club. Having great enthusiasm for Muay Thai and mixed martial arts or MMA, these two men rarely miss a training session with Long and other members of the club. With reasonable fees, 
they became members of the club and benefit from the activities here. I'm practicing here since, as I would say, November, October, so about five months. It's mixed martial, martial arts. Basically, they do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Capoeira, Muay Thai boxing, and also cardio and fitness, so keep you in good shape. At the same time, it gives you self-confidence, and, and also it's a, it's, a, it's a combat sport. Working out in other gyms, especially high-end ones, could see these sports enthusiasts spend hundreds of US dollars a month. But the members of the club here pay a monthly fee of less than $100. In return, they have quality coaching and facilities. The facility is uh, really nice. We can uh, have a lot of uh, stuff like gloves or pads. We are not so compelled to buy them first. And uh, the coaching is tough maybe in the beginning when you, you don't know how to how to deal with uh, Muay Thai or other martial art, but uh, quickly you know you can improve yourself and the uh, exercises are very good and you feel stronger and better quickly. Every time I come here I'm satisfied and I'm getting fitter and healthier and I'm becoming stronger and more confident and this is really uh, worth a lot of money really. Since the opening three years ago, the club has around 100 official members and is attracting more and more trainees. A lot of the expats uh, just come here and uh, because it's basically something different for them, you know. It's not the, the usual tennis club or, or uh, you know, like a high class, uh, expensive uh, a gym. Uh, and, you know, they basically uh, come here because it reminds them a little bit about uh, of, their, of the training that they may get in their countries. Mixed martial art, jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai are still new to sport enthusiasts in Vietnam. But they are already popular among expats and this is definitely becoming another element in the city's sports scene.